Well guys, I got another video. I've been playing with my 2.5 gig PoE switch over there behind us in the rack and I really like it. I've been playing with it with some of these phones, some VLANs and tagging and all that kind of stuff. But first, did you like and subscribe my last video? Go do it. I was actually going to open my drink first, but uh, I thought I'd throw that in there. So, <clears throat> These are good. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to add a VLAN, remove a VLAN, how to tag a port, untag a port, and then show you how to tag a port with an untagged traffic going through it. So, for an example, you would use a phone plugged into the port on one VLAN, but the device plugged into it, most likely a computer, and that one odd time I have seen a printer plugged into a phone, very bad idea, but it did work and wasn't happy. You plug your computer into it, like a typical environment, like at a bank or a big business where maybe you only have one port in the wall where you want to push traffic through it. It works. The optimal way would be to have two ports, one for the phone and one for the uh, computer. But in this video today, I'm going to show you logging into the switch, how to VLAN tag and all that kind of stuff. So first thing we should do is Log into the uh, portal here. So we got the ingenious cloud. That's it. Jason at Jason's lab. And my password. I have no idea what it is because it's encrypted. And we have 2FA. Highly recommend everybody uses 2FA. Uh, so we have 681. Seven six eight. There we go. So adding the VLAN is easy because if we log into my uh, router already for firewall, uh, yeah, we know what's not accepted. We will confirm that I have a VLAN and I've already tested that, but I'm going to show you guys. Um, we go to interfaces. Other types, VLAN. We have this VLAN over here. We have it called 100. So let's go into the switch and we'll create a VLAN, pretty easy. So I was doing it a different way. Then I messaged Brian and I was like, I can't delete a VLAN. I don't understand why not. And of course, leave it to me to find the wrong way to do something, but now I know how to do it the right way. And that's why I'm creating the video so I can show you guys. So we'll go over here. We'll go to the little switch, the little gear icon and we'll hop down to VLAN. As you can see, there's no VLANs on here. It's all default. What I'm going to do is we're going to create a VLAN. We'll go add. We're going to call this test. And we're going to call it 100 for the VLAN ID. Right? So that's created. This is corresponding to the VLAN that we've already tagged on the sweat or on the uh, firewall. Once we've done that, now we can go back to the dashboard, to the switch, and we'll go to details. There's probably another way of doing it, but I'm doing it this way. We go VLAN. Now we know down here, we see the VLAN 100. Now we need to add that. But first, before we can do that, we have to tag it. So when you tag this, every VLAN you have, my main port uplink onto the switch is eight. So every VLAN you add to it, you have to tag that. So that way the VLAN you have that you've created will know where to send that traffic to. So on this one, We'll go like this, and we're gonna go tagged. Oh, love it. Eight, and then untagged, we're gonna go to mm, port, hold on, three. I'm gonna go to port three. So we go like this, and we just go three. Oh, we have to add that three, and it's untagged. Okay. Done, apply. But that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. You have to do one more thing. And so what we have to do is go to ports and then go to three. And we have to click PVID. See right here it says PVID is one. This has to be changed to a different. So now we have to go here, go configure. And we have to change this PVID right, where was that? PVID, we have to change that to this. So, 
if you plug a computer in where you're not tagging the port, it's untagged, it will work. And I'll show you that. We'll plug it in. I'll go plug my laptop into port three. Uh, do we have to push apply? Always forget to do that. Nope. So if I take my shiny new laptop here, I open this up, I'll grab a cable and we'll plug it into port three and we'll see it come online here, right? Port three. Got myself my shiny blue cable. So we'll plug it into the laptop here to show you guys. Log in, we'll turn off wireless. Okay, we'll go to the system settings and I'll show you that it's got act access. So network, VLAN connected. So 192.168.100.50. And I can show you that device. So if we go here, and where was that? That's under, uh, where, oh, that's a service, sorry. Service, DHCP, leases. We should see right there, 100 for that. So now, if you tag that, untag it, and then change the PVID, that will work. Now let's take that one step further. Let's unplug my laptop because they're going to show you with the phone. If we change that untag port right here, so if we go back to three and we configure this, actually we're going to do it to a different port. We're going to leave three alone. I'll do it a different way. We'll go to VLAN. We're going to use port four. Uh, edit here. We're going to tag port four, so comma, four question mark you can always just click on it and do all that stuff so now that we're tagging this what's going to happen is we're going to log into the phone before we push apply on this and we're going to tell the phone we want you to be tagged on 100 so look at the tag 100 and then the other tag it's untagged it'll see number one so if that happens what's going to happen is the phone's going to get a 100 address but the computer will get the 52 address and we'll show you that so First, before we go too far, if I push apply to that, then we'll get to the phone and I'll have to plug it. We need to go to this phone's IP address, which is 52.28. So let's log into that. 192.168.52.28. This is my nice grand stream phone that I recycled many of them out of the garbage can at work because nobody wanted them. So it's got no SIP registration because the phone's unplugged. So we go to network. And if we go to advanced settings and we change this to uh, 100. Oh, no, nope. uh, we want to go one. So it's going to use in the default VLAN, which is one. And we change this to 100. And then we go save and apply. I'm going to lose connection to it, but I'll come back. So now we have to go back to the switch. And if we apply this by checking the little check mark right here, and then go and apply, we'll go back to here and we'll go ports, port four. I'm gonna unplug it just so we can refresh uh, this one. Right? I'm not gonna plug my Mac into it yet until the phone's fully booted, because then it'll get its VLANs and all its tagging and stuff. Perfect opportunity to drink my favorite drink. I really like these switches. I think I'm going to pick up the same switch I have at home for my lab, the 24 port PoE, so I can do more stuff like this. Ah, it's got an IPN. Just took a couple more seconds. So the phone has got 100.51. We can see that in the DECP list. So if we re. No, we don't want to restart the service. Let's just click leases. 100. 51 right there there's our test vlan and uh, grand stream networks there if i plug the laptop into it it should get the 52 network let's see oh it's already connected right now it's got 192.168.52.10 it's passing the tag traffic to the phone the phone says hey i'm supposed to look at that traffic that's for me 
and then take whatever other traffic that's not tagged, untagged, and push it to the next client which would be my phone. This is how they do it in banks. They use different numbers, of course, because they're out of range and people don't know what they are, but they're hidden. So this is a perfect example of using the phone in the middle of a laptop or a desktop on here. And it works great. I've been doing it here at the house. My work phone, I have a desktop sometimes I connect. My personal grand stream phone, I'll be doing some more videos on that later, has a friend's SIP server on it. And then my SIP server, which is over there, the grand stream one, I do the same thing. So I just wanted to show you guys that because it's pretty easy to do, but you just got to remember how it's done in the genius stuff. So remember, when you do a untagged, you got to change your PVID for it to work. If you don't, then you'll sit there for hours and it'll just, it'll just get frustrated. And I figured this out because I was looking through why this wasn't working. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me, PVID is not there. Why isn't this working? And then all of a sudden it did work, right? Quick little video. Hopefully this helps you. Um, if you have any suggestions or any videos you want me to show you how to do and stuff like that, let me know. But I wanted to start the ball rolling here doing videos on ingenious stuff since they sent me the switch and I told them I'd like to do that for people. Just remember, I'm doing this from an amateur position. I don't know everything about every piece of ingenious hardware but after a while i'll know stuff and i'll be able to answer questions for people and let them know um my whole goal was to show people what you can do with the hardware from a beginner point to advanced okay i'm gonna now mm, take a sip of that and one before i go and uh you're gonna go and like this video or comment down below jay you will probably awesome thank you uh, to delete a VLAN, Brian might chuckle at this, but to delete a VLAN, you have to go to VLAN after clicking on the wheel, and then you can click on the VLAN, and you can remove it. I'm not going to do that right now because it's running, but that's how you do that. You guys have a great day. I'm going to go edit this video and upload it for you guys, and um, questions, comments, let me know. And uh, thank you to Brian and Emil for sending me this switch. I really like it.